Okay. All right. So welcome back, guys. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, no key answer. Only me and two girl. Uh, good morning. The screen is quite small. Huh? You can uh, make full screen. <laughs> Cannot see. <laughs> sure. Put the word on the way. Uh, after the presentation, you will give us the slide, right? Or what? Yes, we'll be getting it. Don't worry. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's get started. Uh, yesterday, we started with our initial uh, topics. Right? So we start with cloud computing. We discussed what are the types of cloud computing, types of cloud services benefits of cloud computing and we are about to start like we had a brief introduction about types of cloud services right. so any questions any doubts before we get started no you may carry on all right So yesterday we had a brief discussion about the types of cloud services, right? So I'll just begin from I'll just start begin from here. Okay. So in in cloud, right? So there are major three types of cloud services: IaaS, infrastructure as a service; PaaS, platform as a service. SAAS software as a service and again we see anything as a service code as a service or so on okay so how this is differentiated the differentiation is done like what is the scope of management or administration of the customer right so who is customer here we are the customer where we are consuming the cloud services okay and what is the scope of management and administration of the vendor vendor or the service provider so who is the vendor or service provider in this scenario microsoft is a vendor or the service provider or if you take amazon aws like if you take aws amazon as the service provider okay so this is how wherein the two types of cloud services are differentiated here. Okay. So now what we do is we take one simple example and see how you can host the same thing or how you can avail the same services in the cloud or like same services or same resources in the cloud in different type of cloud services. So let's take a simple example where you want to host an application for which you require a database. Okay, let's take a simple example of this. So now, how this will be achieved when you want to host the same in your premises? Okay, we'll compare from there. So now, if I want to host an application for which I require a SQL database, right? So what you want to do, you want to create a SQL database. How are you going to create a SQL database? To create a SQL database, you require a SQL application to be installed, right? Only then you can create your database. Then you can create your application and point your application to store your data in a database. So this SQL application, we can call it as a runtime or middleware, right? So this SQL application is installed. Once the SQL application is installed, then you can create your database instance. Then you can configure the application to store your data in your database instance. To install the SQL application, right, you require a OS, right? So where you're going to install application. Either you'll be installing under the 
Windows platform or on the Linux platform, right? So on top of operating system, you'll install the SQL database, then you'll configure your database instance, then your application, you're going to integrate to it. To run this Windows or Linux machine, right? So nowadays, any servers you see, you will be hosting it on a virtualization platform, either VMware, Hyper-V, whatever. So you're going to create a virtual machine instance, then you're going to deploy the operating system on top of it. Then you're going to create your application, which is runtime or middleware, which is the SQL database. Then you create your database instance, then your application. To host this virtual machine require a physical hardware like compute, storage, network. Right. So this is where you'll be deploying in your on-prem. Means you're building everything from a scratch in your private cloud or in your premises, like your data center, your physical server, compute hardware, storage, network, and connect them each other. And then deploy your virtualization like hypervisor, create a virtual machine with the Windows or Linux operating system, install the required runtime or middleware, or even we can call it as an application. Then you are uh, what do you say the data or the database then you configure your application over there So if anything goes down here like a cable cuts you're going to replace it, right? And if there is a hardware issue, you're going to take care if there is a OS issue You're going to take care if you want to deploy the hypervisor updates or the operating system updates or your runtime or middleware updates, right? So everything is taken care by you and again, down times, right? So that is taken care by months. To host some application, you have some requirement. So this is how your architecture looks in your premises where you are going to take care from end to end. Okay. So this is how wherein you'll be hosting in your premises. Now, the same requirement. How can I host in a cloud? What are the ways we can do it? Okay, so as I said, you the types of cloud services depends upon like uh, what vendor is vendor is going to take care and what the customer is going to take care. The same requirement if I want to host in a cloud as an infrastructure as a service, how can I achieve this? Okay, means you can have your cloud subscription, right? Then you can put a requirement saying that. I want a server with Windows or Linux operating system, right? With so and so RAM, so and so CPU, so and so hard disk capacity. So once you put your requirement, a machine will be deployed and you'll be getting your credentials like your IP address of the server and username and password. To get inside that okay then you're going to install whatever you want there the same sql application then you can create your database instance then you can configure your application to use the database instance so now the beyond the scenes right so if you create a virtual machine from here only you'll be managing it so what is beyond that? The hypervisor, the physical hardware like compute storage network, data center, all those stuff. So this is taken care by Microsoft. You need not to worry anything on this. Clear? Any power outage, hardware failure, hypervisor updates are taken care. You need not to worry on this part. Okay? The same requirement what we host, the architecture, whatever you see here is the same across the cloud either you go with the ias or platform as a service or software as a service the only difference here is what is your scope of management and what is vendor scope of management any questions on this no all right the same requirement what are the other ways you can deploy in a cloud so now my requirement is I want to have a database to store my data of my application. Simple. 
So in platform as a service, you can directly create the database instance. Okay. So how do you connect your database instance? Like using your SQL management studio or any other tools, right? You connect your database instance, create your tables, then you can integrate your application. The same thing you do it in your on-prem as well. And in platform as a service also, you can do the same way. You can directly create the database instance. And this you can connect and you can manage directly. And anything beyond this, you need not to worry, like deploying the SQL server, managing the SQL application, and managing the operating system and the virtualization, the server, compute storage, you need not to worry. That is taken care by the vendor. Okay. The same requirement, even you can deploy in a platform as a service as well. Okay. Here I've taken SQL database as an example. Okay. There are many platform as a service as are available. You can consume that. Okay. So what is software as a service here? Okay, here I'll just take a bit change. So let's take example, you want to host your email services, your exchange server for your email, like a couple of years back, traditional way where we used to host our own mail servers. So most commonly used the mail server is the exchange, the Microsoft exchange or Microsoft email services. So if you want to host in on-prem, how you're going to deploy it, right? Same, same thing. You require all this physical hardware virtualization is you will deploy a windows server operating system right and here you are going to install the microsoft exchange application then you're going to create your mailbox database then your email application will be running on top of it right then you're going to create your recipient mailbox and you'll be managing it even if at all if you want to do the same in IAS you can do it but again people will not like I have not seen much use cases but when it comes to software as a service right so in Microsoft the Office 365 is the one most like Office 365 is the one most uh, SaaS platform what we can see most of the organization are consuming it so here what will happen I need not to worry anything this infrastructure like physical hardware and windows server operating system and your exchange services your exchange database like whatever the high availability and other stuff right i need not to worry anything about this i just create a user assign the license the mailbox will be created i will manage the exchange infrastructure like mail flow security and other stuff and anything beyond this i need not to worry on this okay so here the architecture is same whatever you host in your premises either in ias pass or sas is the same only thing what is our scope of management and what is vendor scope of management so this is how the types of cloud services are right any questions on this So now if you ask me a question, okay, so what is the best approach? Should I go with infrastructure as a service or platform as a service? It's up to you. Okay. So let's take example in my organization. I have sufficient staff to manage Windows or Linux operating system. I have sufficient staff to manage the SQL application, right? Then I can go with the infrastructure as a service. Let's take example. I don't have much resource. Okay. So in that case, I don't want to have much management and I don't want to hire some guy to manage the SQL or Windows or Linux. I can go with a platform as a service, deploy the instance, connect your application, create your tables, start working. It's up to you, whatever you want to go, you can go. But again, the cost perspective, IAS is cheaper than the platform as a service. Okay, anyways, the costing 
it's not in that way i mean to say but when you see actually here you will come across the os licensing sql licensing and os administration and sql administration and the downtimes right so all those things are involved so when you see all this cost cost perspective this works in a better way okay all right so this is about the types of cloud services so this architecture you can see in any cloud azure aws google whatever any questions any doubts so far all right let's move to the next slide so far we discussed the basics about the cloud now we are going to start discussing about the microsoft azure services so microsoft azure is a open flexible cloud platform that will enable you to quickly build deploy and manage the required solution across the global network of microsoft managed data center so what does this mean even my experience so if you want to deploy any services and if you want to manage any services aws platform is pretty straightforward you have very good documentation where you can refer and very good ui where you can deploy and manage your services in an easy way so that's why it says open and flexible cloud platform okay you can build your services quickly and you can start running your application or services in the cloud and microsoft has their data center across the globe so if you want to host any services in any specific country or region you can do that and microsoft is not meant only to run only the microsoft related applications so you can run any program language or framework in the microsoft cloud and it's pretty straightforward you can easily integrate your on prem infrastructure with microsoft azure cloud whatever the services you host okay like virtual machine or static websites or your sql database or any networking services any application services you get 99.95 sorry 99.95% monthly uptime sla but still you can design your infrastructure in such a way you can achieve 99.99% of uptime sla for your application it's up to you how do you design it but if you let's take example if you create a virtual machine so if you ask what is sla you get 99.95% is a minimum sla what you get okay automatic os patching and the services or the application patching right so i just discussed here if you go with a ias right so your uh, hypervisor updates are taken care and your firmware updates are taken care if you go with a platform as a service your operating system updates are taken care your application updates are taken care right so it depends upon what type of services you are going the patching maintenance are taken care of accordingly okay when you look about the services you see a lot of compute services are available in cloud you can consume it if you're looking for storage solution or data solution like sql database or your storage you can consume in the cloud if you're looking in a networking solution like load balancing traffic manager there are a couple more yes you can consume in the cloud and there are many application services are available like caching identity and access management like your azure active directory cdn and power bi data analytics so on so microsoft has their data center across the globe it's not 38 i guess it's 42 or 44 plus regions across the globe so you want to deploy the services in any country you can choose and you can deploy the services okay 
So what are the common use cases? Like you have some requirement like hosting your virtualization, storing some data, DevOps management or development, identity and access management, right? Yes, so there are services available in cloud. You can easily connect your on-prem and you can start running your services as a hybrid or completely on the cloud as well. Okay, there are multiple cloud service provider. So why do I need to choose Microsoft Azure? Right. So security and the trust, right? So in today's date also like we use Microsoft services or the application like your computers running with Windows operating system or MS Office or your Office 365 so on right and Microsoft Cloud is not new in the market so MSN Messenger or the Hotmail these are the very old cloud services available from Microsoft okay Later on, the Office 365 is the most commonly used across the globe as enterprise mailing and communication. Yes. You can consume Microsoft Azure as well. Okay. So now, if you ask me, what are the, what are the real-time use cases where people are adapted or consuming the cloud service? We'll see the, we'll try to understand the scenario, like what are the most common use cases? Okay, in simple way where you want to host some application where you require a Windows or Linux operating system, right? Yes, you can create your virtual machine in a cloud, Windows or Linux box, and you can deploy your applications on top of it. Right. So this is also simple use cases where you can see adoption of cloud services. Also, if you're looking for some storage solution, right? So this slide, which I'm showing up, this is not locally stored in my computer. It's stored in OneDrive, right? So the same way, if you're looking for any storage solution, right? Yes, you can consume the storage services in cloud and you can start keeping your data in the cloud. Means you can consume your cloud as your storage solution as well. Like your file share, so on. Your OneDrive, your SharePoint, right? You can see that also as example for your cloud storage. And other way is the backup. Let's take a scenario. I have my infrastructure running in my premises, my application, my data, everything. So now, if you want to take a backup, backup is very important. Data is very critical. And whatever the critical data, you have to protect them, right? So if you see the traditional way, you take a backup from your server, like from your, wherever your data is stored, right? So what do you do? You dump it in a different hard disk for a couple of days so that you can restore very quickly. And after some days, what do you do? You move the data to a tape drive. After some days, what do you do? You ship the data drive to a different place and store them in a secure way. Right, so this is a traditional backup still we use it. So there's a long time for your restoration whenever it comes to a restoration part and so on so so instead of running such a long what you can do you can directly dump your data to the cloud okay means still you can host your infrastructure in your on-prem and your critical data you can store it in cloud you can use or consume cloud as your backup solution you can do that as well Okay, and uh, another use case is the disaster recovery. So now I have my production application hosted in so and so country or a physical region. So I have my critical application where I need this to be available 24 by seven. Like if you take Amazon, Flipkart, right? So they run 24 by seven. So 
when you ask the downtime obviously there will be but we never experience that so in this scenario like if there is any physical disaster like recently there was a huge rain in chennai and there was some outage with power or internet in such scenario there will be a downtimes so to overcome what we do we build a replica copy of a uh, critical applications in a different physical region like i take a data center secondary region in singapore or any other place okay so instead of building one more physical infrastructure what you can do you can replicate your infrastructure to cloud your critical applications to the cloud so whenever your on premises is down you can turn on your service in the cloud so that you can have your uptime of your application means even there are use cases where people are consuming cloud as their disaster recovery site or disaster recovery plans okay and let's take example i mine is a small company or whatever it is so now i want to develop something and i want to test it later if i require i want to host or do some r and d whatever so if i don't have sufficient bandwidth in on prem so with my cloud subscription i can create the services like compute storage network deploy your application develop your application test your application later if you want to host in a cloud you can host it or once you're testing everything is done if you want to scratch it down yes you can do okay this is also another use case what we can see so i don't want to invest huge money to have some dev or test environment lying without use so as and when required i can spin up do my development testing once it is done decommission that okay run data warehouse with power bi like if at all if you are looking some sort of analytics power bi is one of the cloud <coughs> services which you can avail or most of the organization nowadays they are using for their data analytics and migrate your on prem infrastructure so now let's take example i have my data center and i have my applications running in there okay and also i have data center in multiple different countries okay so now i don't want to manage in my on premises so i want to move entirely to the cloud in that case also people are migrating their services to cloud completely otherwise let's take example couple of data center there are very few applications and i don't want to invest so much money for physical infrastructure and so on right so in that case partially i can move that specific specific data center to the cloud and some in on prem work as a hybrid right so this is also most common use cases what we see in a today's scenario migrate completely or migrate where you have less infrastructure where you are spending a lot of money to manage it right in that scenario also you are moving your stuff to the cloud and reach your where your data center own okay so in this example let's take example i have my business in india now i want to expand my business in australia singapore or any other country so if i want to do that right so i want to have my physical it resource there to host my application where you see a lot of compliance requirements right location specific so in that scenario what i can do instead of buy like renting a physical space buying the hardware and hosting my applications right so in, in stuff like initial investment or for some reason i don't want to have any physical infrastructure there in that scenario where you can deploy your services in a cloud by choosing the specific country or a region right so where you don't have physical data center still you can host your application in the cloud in that specific region and you can host your infrastructure there as well okay so these are the most common scenarios what we see in today's time where people are consuming the cloud services either azure aws or google any questions any doubts on this
I hope it's going good. So if at all, if you have any doubts, any questions, please feel free to ask me. All right, so I'll move to the next slide. Okay, the compliance is one of the core component, right? So now the cloud give you more benefit, cost saving, so and so. But still, if you want to keep your data, right, on the cloud or host some application in the cloud, you come across a lot of compliance requirement. Like if you are a financial sector, like your banking, insurance, medical, or government sector, or any other different verticals, right? So there will be a compliance guidelines like PCI DSS, HIPAA compliant, and SOC compliant. And also there is region specific, right? So GDPR, so on. Some countries like they don't want the data to be stored of their people data in a different country, right? For region specific compliance requirements. So when it comes to Azure, right? So this is a pretty old slide. Okay, so they have the required global level certification like ISO, SOC, PCI DSS, and region specific to some verticals like HIPAA compliant on United States. And there are some region specific like China or Euro. Right? And again, for government one, they have a different infrastructure for government application like if you are like if you are from any government sector where you want to host your services in cloud there's a different environment for government okay so there are they have the required compliance and certification like audit certification like they comply with the standards where you can post so when you ask what is this compliance or like how it stands up Go back to this slide. So whatever is the vendor management, correct? Whatever you see here, like their physical data center and whatever the encryption they use on their hardware, right? And so and so. Even if you have your data center now, even you will have your compliance guidelines. A data center should be having solid walls. It should have two step or one step of biometric authentication, so and so. Right. So same way, whatever is the, under the vendor scope, they are compliant. Only thing, whatever is your scope, like hosting your application, installing the required antivirus, installing the required monitoring, auditing, so that you should take care on your scope of management. But when it comes to their infrastructure part, they are compliant with. You need not to worry on that scope. Okay, so this is about the Microsoft Azure. Any questions, any doubts? Shall we move on? All right. This slides I will share with you. Okay, don't worry. So with this, we covered from yesterday class till now over here, okay? So Azure Marketplace, I'll cover it up in tomorrow class. So today I'll just try to cover quickly about the subscription and also I'll show you how to create the subscription. So I would request you guys to create your subscriptions, okay? So that from the upcoming classes, wherein can start doing the practical as well okay so additional one or two class will be theory class then it will be theory plus practicals okay all right so now Okay, so far we understood about the Microsoft. Now I've decided to 
host my some services or consume some services in Microsoft Cloud for my organization. How can I do it? So first thing, you should have your Microsoft account. Right, so how do you get it? You have to sign up. Okay. So now there are different types of subscriptions available in the cloud. Okay, before we go to the subscription, we'll try to understand how to create your Microsoft account or how the architecture on a back. So Microsoft Cloud Domain is called on Microsoft.com. Okay, and now if I want to create my account for my organization, basically we call that as a tenant. So let's take example, my company name is ABC and I have an email suffix at abc.com, okay? And now I want to have my domain or like the tenant name as ABC, right? Or whatever you can call it, okay? Let's take it simple way. I want to call my tenant as ABC. So it looks in this way, abc.onmicrosoft.com. So tenant is a unique for every individual. So you can create more than one tenant also if you require. What will happen? Tenant when you create, it is a one infrastructure. Okay. So this is my tenant, abc.onmicrosoft.com. So this is my security boundary for any cloud services I run in the Microsoft. So what are the cloud services you can see? You can see the Azure subscriptions. You can create one or more than one Azure subscription. We will discuss that. And also like Office 365, Dynamics CRM, right? So these are also the cloud services you can create under your same tenant. Okay, that's it. So subscription one, Azure subscription two. We will discuss why you can have more than one subscription or what is Azure subscription. Also, you can have your other cloud services like Office 365 or so on. So all this thing will be deployed under your single tenant. Usually we'll be deploying in a single not with the multiple, like your Office 365 and your Azure will be under one single tenant. So like this, even different organization can have their own tenant, okay? In some cases, even I can have multiple tenant for my own organization, like my test tenant. Like for my test, I don't want to have any connection between my test and prod. So in that scenario, I can create it this way also abc test dot on microsoft.com so in this case i have two different tenant so what will happen these are the two different infrastructure which will not be connected each other by default okay whatever i want to deploy here i can do it so these are two different ones so there is no connectivity between them even though both are owning by you so if you want to have any sort of connection then you have to build between them. Right, so that is what we see B2B, B2C, right? B2C is the one, it's a simple example. Right, so don't worry too much there, we'll come over that, okay? So this is your tenant. And this is your subscriptions. These are the subscription where you will be deploying your services. We'll see that. So before that, we'll try to understand what are the types of subscriptions. Okay. What is a free trial subscription? I'll be helping you to create your free trial where you can do your labs or hands-on over there. So this free trial subscription is available only one time. 
okay you can create your free trial subscription or you will be eligible to use only one time okay so in this free trial this is valid for 30 days okay you can explore the microsoft services for 30 days what will happen when you create your free trial account this is going to credit some money to your azure account not your bank account to your azure account okay somewhere equivalent to 200 dollars you will be getting a credit to your azure account means if you deploy any services in cloud it is chargeable even in a free trial but where it is going to charge whatever the credit microsoft is giving to your azure account any services you run for whatever the duration that amount will be deducted okay to create this free trial account you need to provide your credit card mobile number and your email id these are the three things which is required to create a free trial account okay so if you have a question what will happen after 30 days not to worry after 30 days your sub your free trial subscription will be disabled there is no auto renewal and since you are giving your credit card when you give while creating your account it will deduct some two rupees inr or whatever and you will get it back to only to validate your account information okay that doesn't mean that after 30 days it's going to start consuming from your card no by default after 30 days your free trial will be disabled unless until you click on upgrade it okay or what will happen if i exhausted with 200 dollars right i'm done with my 200 dollars so what will happen in that scenario also your subscription would be disabled okay so there is no auto renewal unless until you manually upgrade your free trial to the paid subscription any questions any doubt on this free trial subscription and again free trial subscription and your regular subscription there is no difference in the sense any services you can deploy in the free trial as well but there is some limitation that's it apart from that whatever the topics we are going to cover you can explore every topic in the free trial as well i have a question yeah please so uh, i set one up in the past okay and it expired okay mm -hmm. now i cannot do it again correct do i need to do pay as you go okay good question i forgot to tell you about that okay see what will happen now you are giving these three credentials your card your mobile number your email id yeah so these are the three things which are considered like whether you have consumed before or not so in this scenario you have already used so what you can do is you even you can create one more free trial with a different phone number different email id and different credit card and you should not use anything which has been used earlier let's take example i am using the same credit card second time but a different phone number different email id so the card is already been used so with that they will identify that you have been already consumed so you are not eligible for second time and what will happen the second phone number second email id will also be marked as used and again if at all if you are using with a different card with the, the second email id or second phone number again that card will also uh, you will not be able to use and it will say that you are not eligible for it so if at all if you want to create it so what you do is use a different card different phone and different email id nothing should repeat okay thank you you can create it okay and second one is a pay as you go so this, is, this is what what you see in your real time so pay as you go is a subscription see creating your free trial or pay as you go the steps are same okay only thing the type of subscription is different but pay as you go you can create in two way using your credit card 
use your credit card and you can create your PSEO subscription. If at all, if you have an enterprise agreement with Microsoft, with your enterprise agreement also, you can create your PSEO subscription and your charges will be like you will be getting your bill under your enterprise agreement. Okay. These are the two ways where you can create PSEO subscription. Any questions, any doubts on this? And also you can see something called Azure Passes. So this Azure Passes will be given by Microsoft or any Microsoft authorized uh, training centers, right? So you'll be getting some $50 pass. So you can spin your services up to $50 and you can explore it. Okay. But in real time, you will be seeing your pay as you go only. And even we don't use the free trial to explore anything in the corporate environment. On the introduction to your subscription. If you have any questions, we can cover it up. Or should I show how to create the subscription now so that you can create your accounts by today or before tomorrow class? Yeah, you can show. Okay. Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, so now you can create your free trial. I'll share the link in the chat. You can note it down. So when you can search in Azure, like sorry, Google Azure free trial account. So here you can see start for free, pay as you go. If you want to go with pay as you can choose it or start for free can choose this one, but don't go with the pay as you go. Okay, for now you can take advantage of the free trial. I'll put this link on the chat box. All right, so now I'll open an incognito mode. Okay. So when you open this link, either free trial or pay as you go, it comes to the same window. So now to create your tenant and the subscription, first thing your tenant will be created. Okay. So initially what will happen when you try to create your tenant will be created first. And once your tenant is created, then your subscription will be created. You can have one or more than one subscription under your tenant. Okay. So if you want to create your tenant, so first thing you need to sign up, right? So you should have your Microsoft account. Okay. If you don't have your Microsoft account, you have to create the one. So now you can use your corporate email ID and you can create your Microsoft account in real time when you see in your corporate environment, okay? Or at present for your training and other stuff, you can use your Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo Mail, whichever you want. So it doesn't mean that only you should have your Microsoft account like Outlook or Hotmail. You can have your Gmail and you can sign up. You can have your uh, Yahoo Mail and you can sign up. So first thing you should have your Microsoft account to create your tenant and subscription. So if you don't have Microsoft account, you can create from here. Or if you have your Microsoft account mapped with your Gmail or Yahoo mail, you can sign in with that. Okay. If you don't have, click on create one. Give your email ID, your Gmail, Yahoo mail, Hotmail, or like Gmail or ya Yahoo mail or any other, other than Hotmail or Outlook.com. Right. So give your email ID, set up your password. You'll get an email verification, verify it. Once that is done, your Microsoft account is created. Then you'll come back to the same screen or it will continue from there. Give your email ID and the password. So with this, you will sign up. You will sign in with your Microsoft account. Once this is done, then you will be asked for supply your credit card, your mobile number. When you give your credit card, make sure that the international transaction is enabled and it will detect some money like if you create in India, it will deduct two Indian rupees and you will get it back. That's only to validate your card. 
and your phone number you'll get a otp to verify your phone number anyways the email will be verified here okay all three things if at all if you have used earlier when you're creating a free trial now don't repeat any one of it so all three should be a new okay email mobile and card so once that is done your free trial subscription will be created and while signing up here don't use your corporate email id okay use your personal id why means if at all if you use your corporate email id what will happen your free trial subscription will be created under your organization tenant okay so don't do that use your personal email id and create your free trial account any questions any doubts on this okay while creating your free trial account if at all if you are stuck or if you have any doubt please stop it so tomorrow we can discuss and you can create it otherwise if you are good please try to create a free trial account by today or before tomorrow class okay so then i'll show you how it really looks when you create your tenant this architecture i'll show you okay so tomorrow we just hold on here and tomorrow we are going to discuss a bit more about the access control on your subscription and azure resource manager and then we'll continue with the resource manager and other stuff and also i'll cover this three topics once we create the subscription what are the ways you can manage your azure any questions any doubts so far sir i put my email address in the chat box mm -hmm. um can you please share the recordings with me to that email yeah don't worry about the recordings uh i hope everyone email id is with our coordinator the materials link and the recordings will be shared to your IDs. Don't worry on that. Okay. Uh, I don't think they have my email, so I just put it in the chat box. Do you think they're gonna capture it? Yes, yes, definitely they do it. So if anyone is not shared their contact details like email ID or phone number, I would request you to uh, share in the chat box as well. You can chat with a Visual Path organizer, right? So they will note it down. And the materials and the videos will be shared to your email ideas okay i would request everyone to share your email id and your phone number in the chat to the visual path administrator all right any questions any doubts so far okay no worries if at all if you have any doubt any questions we can discuss in tomorrow class as well okay so try to create your subscription so tomorrow we will start looking working practically on that okay all right then yeah so i'll repeat again so please share your email id and the phone number on the chat box to visual path administrator so that they'll be in touch with you all right then thank you guys thanks for your time appreciate that we'll catch up tomorrow then see you bye bye thank you see you